Dear comrades, I have the German respect for you guys and today I have the first episode of the Escape from Tarkov guide for you out there that we can learn something together. So this video series is all about learning from mistakes and learning from raids. So and that's what I would recommend all the time. Watch your own replays, watch your own gameplay and try to find some mistakes. So this replay is from my buddy facility manager great name for this guy because he has so much luck finding keys and if you need a key go to this guy and i will stop the replay for a second because i don't have any information about the gear what's going to happen so that we you as a watcher and myself as a commentator can try to find some mistakes or some good points and let's analyze this replay together and of course i try to give my feedback to my friend the facility manager and to you guys out there that you can learn something and that's why you are also here for so don't forget to subscribe that you are not going to miss any video anymore so what we can see so far is he has one of the best guns in the game right now he got a vector nimble vector very good setup perfect suppressor 50 round magazine and he's wearing a rig the tv rig is great if you're going for loot runs it's a level 4 basic rig and you have a lot of space what we also can see is that he has no painkillers nothing nothing for heavy bleeding because the eye effect is quite low and you have no quick painkillers in your pockets or somewhere else usually i got mine in the pockets or in the rig on a single slot so what i would recommend is go for morphine or some painies or whatever and make a quick bind on them you don't have to drag and drop it right here just hover above the item and put the right key furthermore he has a lot of ammunition in his tactical rig two additional magazines and that's enough ammunition so far but furthermore it's a good choice to have enough ammunition with the vector because the fire rate is quite high let's continue he has some contacts perfect to get all the information you need and he's also wearing the armor side night vision that's the bluish one only the gpnvg the quad eye is in my opinion better and he's covering his face because especially in the nighttime the face is quite bright and what we can see so far with the tricep you can loot a lot and right now he's looting the safe close to his spawn that means he has a little bit of map knowledge i don't know how good he knows reserve and what we can see so far right now is that he's jumping a lot you can do that in the beginning but most of the time especially on reserve especially nighttime you have some players close by and that's the thing right now so hold on for a sec real quick the thing is you can have a player spawn right here or behind this complete line uh, this complete line over here following behind the marked room house and so on and so on that's what i mean with you don't have to rush right now that's the wrong time for rushing because you can in the beginning rush around if you want to go to the marked room real quick or to some specific loot positions but right now you don't have to rush because the player who spawned there are if they want to or if they went to the marked room they will be there and they are looting right now and that means you're jumping and you're running you're quite loud especially during the night time so because he's the facility manager i guess he's going for the marked room maybe he's lucky because he he hadn't the best spawn but his spawn is quite okay but that's the thing if a player would be in house and there we go first shots maybe from scav boss i'm not quite sure maybe from player but that's what I mean. He rushed right into it. He was open for everything. Oh, this flash can be glue car. And we have some different shots. Not for him. So right now we heard some different noises. Some more footsteps. Could be a player group. But combined with the flash. So a quick nade early on in this specific location can be glue car. Let's continue. That was a scaff. And you can see how powerful or quite okay green tracer is. You have a higher flash damage compared to PSD, but a little less penetration. That means you have to aim for flash like straight in the face, body, leg or, or the stomach. And we have still several footsteps above us running around. Could be another player and I guess it's another player because the scaf guards shot something else. But he decides to loot right now and in my opinion that's a big mistake. Why? Because if you are right in this position it's very dangerous from the outside and the scaf guards are intended to be in this stairway. 
But he's continuing going for the marked room. Also very loud right now. Your opponents are... Your opponents have the exact knowledge about where you are currently, currently and that's highly deadly for your gameplay. And furthermore, he takes a lot of time looting it. He wants to be very safe with the loot. But as I said, it's loud. Everybody will hear you. And it's very dangerous in this situation. Player, scav boss guards and so on. And you have the underground, a very new area where player are intended to go. So in my opinion, I wouldn't loot it that way. And furthermore, oh, let's go back for a second. So let's talk about his secure container real quick. It's a great opportunity to take your CMS, your splint and so on, or your Hemo. What you also can do is like, you can throw the CMS and the aloe splint away, take one surf kit, so you have only one item. I know the surf kit takes a little bit longer, but it also has 15 uses and you can restore much more health points from your limbs if you are healing them. Furthermore, what you can see right here is, in my opinion, a wrong balance between the items. What we know so far is that the hammer stat, for example, isn't that expensive. You could change that, or especially with the healing, you could change that and put some more ammunition in your gamma container because the 50 round max with 50 rounds in the magazine, especially with uh, AP 63 or 7 and 31, is quite expensive. That means even if you're dying, you are saving some money. And even at some ruble, it will sum up in the future. So that's why I would put some spare max or extra or more extra ammunition in my gamma container. But it also depends about the price of your ammunition. But as I said, what I do not like is that you don't have any quick, let's say, painkiller in your pockets or in your tactical rig. Because if you are wounded, if you're bleeding or if you broke something during the fight, you can't escape right now. So right now he filled up his magazines, which isn't a bad decision because right now you have a little bit more time, you're not in a fight, but it looks like he's looting again and that's a big mistake because if you killed something and if loot is laying around, this loot is not going to happen. And that's what I mean, as you can see right now, the guards are in this spot. In this side and on the opposite side, you have two stairs and they are right here. They are moving up and down. They are chasing you sometimes and that's a big mistake looting right now. So we also can hear right now some shots. That means, okay, we have a certain player in the area. This should be the first sign of stop looting, stop making any noises or try to hunt the player down. Get us some, informa get us some information, but do not start looting right now because you can't see very badly right now and furthermore he can push you down due to the netcode and several other things he can push you down real quick and you're dead loot is worth nothing if you can't bring it out that's why win the fight have a certain safe area and loot afterwards but right now you can hear the other player is in the middle of the fight use this advantage stop looting stop being a goblin stop being greedy early on as i said if you are dying you lost more than you won win the fights first make a safe area it's not that bad that you are refilling your magazines and in my opinion i would reload right now because he only has a 30 round mag in the weapon and that's what, that's what I mean, you can see the guards are coming, coming to the stairs and that's a big thing you should know if you're chasing Glura, if you're chasing Glucar in this house. So he's again refilling his magazines, which isn't that bad as I said, because the Vector has a very high fire rate, but during this time you should use the 50 round magazine because it's a highly dangerous area. You will have some more fights going on. And what you also can do is carrying a 30 round mag with AP6 free as a first mag against players because it's more likely that you're facing a player very early on on the raid. And again, he's continuing looting, in my opinion, a very bad decision right now because it's not the perfect time for looting. But furthermore, a big benefit about this location right now is that you can hear almost every step. And right now it's getting dangerous. We have a lot of steps close to us. Little slow reaction, but as you can see, green tracer straight in the face. It's perfect. You should play like this, aiming for the head, in the middle of the head, or some stomach. But back again looting isn't that good right now. As I said, save the area and take your time afterwards. 
And another thing, because I'm seeing it right now, first after fight, reload, then loot. In almost every situation. If you can, reload first, loot afterwards. Of course, it should be like the following, heal, reload, loot. And we still can hear the steps, so we have the player and Glucar, of course, because he's not dead, in the certain area. Right now, we are still looting, which is a bad decision. Sure, it's sure thing, maybe you have a better feeling right now, like, yeah, I did something, I'm carrying something. But you also shouldn't forget, and let's stop real quick right here, your weight is very high right now. Because as you can see right here, 59 kilograms is quite a lot. You are very heavy and really, really snow slow. So what you can do if you looted something and you are in the middle of the raid, drop your backpack. Drop your ba backpack to a safe and certain position that you know where you have to pick it up after you won the fight. So keep in mind that you shouldn't be that greedy. Loot is only worth something if you can make it out. We still have some steps above us and if it's a player he can hear you too because as I said steps in this building are very very loud. No. Maybe we shouldn't shoot right now because this was a normal scaf. Killing normal scaf isn't always a good option and he didn't saw this raider close to him. Could be his death but he had some luck. And that's, that's what I mean. It takes quite a time to use painkillers right now, even healing. He binded it on his 5 on the keyboard. Why not using it? So right now you can see he's maybe not that comfortable with his setting. Maybe he needs a little bit more practice. And that's the thing. Practice a lot. It's very important that you are going with the same settings. What I mean is like having your healing every time on the 5. For example, I have my Saliwa or my IFAC or whatever all the time on 4, my painkillers on 5 and my stims on 6. If I'm carrying a stim with a painkiller effect, my stim is on 5 because that's my painkiller. So, and you should keep that all the time because it's very important for your muscle memory that you are doing the right thing under a stressful situation. And we can still hear some steps around us. These steps are turning on the same position, they are talking with you, so it's highly likely that those are gods. Same thing right here, shoot him in the face. You had all the time and opportunities to shoot him straight in the face with your green tracer, would kill him way faster. He did it better right now, reload, heal and looting afterwards. But as I said, looting is not a great or not a best decision in this situation. I would drop my X for example. If I would be in this situation, I collected some loot, I would drop my backpack right now and watch out for the player. Furthermore, the MP5 isn't worth that much. Maybe keep the suppressor, it's not even an SD version, so keep the suppressor. Same with the AK-104, I would drop the mag or drop the AK, there is so much loot laying around and even go for Glucar, he will carry much more. But this right now is a little bit of wasted time and you are giving too much information to your enemy because you're making some noises. So he knows he killed something, oh, we had a sh another shot, silence shot, so very dangerous situation right now. But. He made some space to get some loot, as you can see right now. He killed Glucar because this is his Ash 12 and he did everything right in this situation with looting the pockets first. As I said, I would check the area, but for Glucar, if you think you are safe, loot the pockets first. You can get some key cards and it's profit even if you're dying. Right now he's going for the armor side and 15, it's great, he made everything right. Not carrying the whole thing, just take the night vision with you to save some space. So I wouldn't drop the M14 Max. Oh, this guy is really close. That's the thing. Look at look at that. That's what I mean. That's what the, that that was a normal scaf. If this scaf would be a scaf guard, he probably would be dead because they are roaming around the stairs. It's pretty bad 
waste that much time and that is a big mistake making max in this certain area really big mistake only refill your max and only heal yourself if it's not important in a certain safe space and we could hear that something used painkillers so that's a certain very very specific information that someone is preparing for a fight so he maybe knows we are in the area and you should be aware that a player is very close to you, so stop looting, go for the fight, or take your time, gather some information. Because right now, he can literally run up the stairs and he probably can kill you. So I'm skipping the loot part sometimes because it really takes a lot of time. Right now we can hear the steps, small jump right under our position. We have a very good weapon, the vector, for this certain situation. We have a flashlight to maybe blind some opponents with the night vision. That's why I would carry all the time a uh, flashlight on my weapon. You can blind enemies and with a flashlight and laser combination, it's even better if you're hip firing something, which is really great in a CQB situation. But again, your opponent is or can hear refilling your max. So stop doing that in this situation or in this specific area. We have still some steps close to our position. So the steps are really close. First floor. Yeah, steps are to our right. We have another we have another step to our left. So maybe two player right now. And because you are carrying so much, you don't have to sneak because your steps are so loud. The more you carry, the louder your steps are. So you don't have to sneak right now because you are so loud. It doesn't matter. So we heard it's a scaf close to us, so maybe it's only one player. Good information. And you have so much nades. Pop a nade in the in the room and you could probably win this fight. Yeah, as I thought, close to us, pop a nade to your right or to your left. Oh, we can see him. Pop a nade left, turn on your flash and push him. So this fight, there shouldn't be a way that you are going to lose this fight. So as I said, first thing, first thing, stop, stop it here real quick. The first thing was we had some noises in this room right here. There's only two ways out, right or left. So, and if we drop a real good nade, he can't escape because he has to run out of this area and he will run into your gun if we did this right. So the next thing is we can see him right here. What we can do right now is to drop a nade to our left and push behind or after the nade. What that means is drop a nade and you are forcing your opponent to run or distract your opponent from the certain situation. That means you can kill him by with, with a nade during his running away. So let's continue real quick, but I will stop for a second right here. Perfect. So as you can see right now, and we or the player had enough time to see this also, you can see his body armor. That means even with AP63 you need a couple of shots, but we also can see there is no face shield. Even with a face shield you have very good opportunities to kill him very quickly. So the worst situation right now is shoot him straight into the torso. It would be better to shoot him in the legs, stomach, or straight in the face. But the thing is, if you're looting a lot, if you're looting a lot, um, you are attend to have a certain different field of view. I will mark that real quick. So, for your muzzle memory, you like to have your radical pointed on the ground, because you're looking for loot, of course. Sometimes you can point your radical down to get a better field of view, because you're looking over your radical to this area. I get that. I'm doing this also because you have quite a little bit of zoom. You can watch over your radical or your sight. Yeah, I know Tarkov is a realistic game and so on and so on. But in this area, you saw where your opponent is. 
and you should and you have to aim for the head or even have the certain right adjustment to shoot him in the head or make some small adjustments. What you also could do is shoot him in the throat would kill, would kill him also if he's wearing some face shields. But right now the worst thing happened and you shot him into the torso, into the body armor and he killed you even a little bit quicker because he had some SKSBP, which means hard fight to win if you have a bad adjustment. And that's the point. Check it again. And he even had some end punch and all that stuff, so you could win this fight. I mean, you, you had enough opportunities, you did a lot of shots, but into the arm and into the torso, you could win this fight over here. But that's the thing. That's the thing. In my opinion, there's a little bit of lack of confidence with a fight. Because you may be pushed a little bit too slow around the corner. The peaker's advantage in pushing around corners is such a big thing in Tarkov right now. If you're going slowly around corners, when the enemy knows your position and exactly knows position, it's a bad thing. If you're pushing around corners, try to surprise your enemy. And you should use the peaker's advantage. It's a bad thing in Tarkov. I know it's not sometimes not the way how you should play Tarkov, but it's in the game. And you are going to die very often against the Pika's Advantage. Sometimes you're calling it a hacker and he adjusts the Pika's Advantage. What the Pika's Advantage is, is a lack in terms of service and netcode and all that stuff. Different topic, but believe me guys, push quickly around corners. Push, push, push. In certain situations will give you the upper hand in this fight. And it would. Because if you can see right here, even he knows exactly where you are, he was also very slow. As you can see right here, look where his look where his crosshair is. Pretty bad, it's pretty bad. So if you would a little bit quicker, you could win this fight, converted some adjustments. It's pretty sad because you had enough of loot, but that's what I mean. If you're not, or if you're not able to survive, loot is worthless. And as I said, that's just my opinion. I'm really excited about your opinion about this gameplay and be aware guys, we are not blaming each other on nothing. Everyone is here to learn something that's really important and I forced him to make mistakes. That's why I told him if you're sending me some replays, I need some mistakes because you only or you can learn much more by doing mistakes. And in this certain situation or in this whole fight in this building, I guess he can learn a lot. Uh, he can learn a lot just by watching this video and watching the replay. So if you want to send me some gameplay, some of your replays, I'm really excited to, I really want to try to give you something back and I really try to improve even my own gameplay just by watching your replays. Even I can learn something, some new angles because I can take my time of course right now and rewatch something. So again, I am very excited about your feedback about the first episode or this video series, The Tarkov Coach. And guys, don't forget, if you like the video, show the world that we Germans can do at least something. And if you like, I would appreciate it that we can show it to the world out there. See you in the next video, guys. Bye.